Hey, so uh, I played it. I was at Comic Con and uh, I was invited to go play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which was not at Comic Con, but um, somewhere near Times Square. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna talk about it a little bit and show you some B-roll. And also, I was at the uh, panel, the voice actor panel, for the game, and it was pretty cool. There were some things that were very interesting. Uh, Soldier Boy was playing at one point, but that was before the panel, so I don't think it counts. But um, yeah, I, I really uh, I don't know what to say other than Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two, aka Rebirth, is real. And there's a two-part demo. It's the same. I think it was the TGS demo. Um, basically, they ushered us into a dark room. And there were agents nearby in case we spilled any secrets. No, that's not true at all. Everyone was really nice, and I was really happy to be there. And um, I got invited. And uh, what you're seeing here, I believe, is the 60 FPS mode. And this part of the game is the Mount Nibble section, where Cloud and Sephiroth are climbing the mountain, like uh, Kirk, of course. And what they end up doing is, you know, they fight together. And this is, again, something that I don't really think is much of a spoiler, because A, Final Fantasy VII, the game itself, is many years old, but also they've been showing this off in the trailers and promotional material. So in this, you actually get to play as Sephiroth, and you get to switch between him and Cloud, and there's, like, dual attacks, which is new in the game. As you can see, um, you, can, you can use things to fight the monsters together. And, uh, yeah, I, I didn't record this footage because I was playing the game. I think I played it for about an hour, hour and ten minutes or so. Um, this section of them climbing Mount Nibble, or Nibble, I'm not sure, was about, I don't know, 15 minutes? Sorry, the New York came out a little bit. And um, it was kind of more of a tutorial section and to show off the... I believe this is just performance mode, like um, Final Fantasy 16 had this as well. There's graphics mode and performance mode. And performance mode goes to 60 FPS. They told us to play in graphics mode, which looked pretty good. Um, but yeah, I mean, gameplay-wise, you know what to expect if you played the first one. Because it's the same kind of thing, maybe refined a little bit. Um, the game looks great on the PS5 because the previous one was PS4, which was then upgraded for PS5. And apparently the PC port was not all that amazing. But I don't, I don't know, I didn't play it. Um... But, yeah, you basically end up... Oh, by the way, yes, there are yellow-painted rocks here. The yellow paint is, is the biggest gaming controversy since Jello paint. But, I digress. Someone was kind enough to paint those rocks on Mount Nebel yellow. Just so we know. Just so we know. Playtesters have been, like, screaming about this lately, like... You don't understand, or like developers saying, like when people play test the games, and like you know, most people just don't know what to do, and therefore, you know, they have to paint some walls and some boxes yellow. <laughs> anyway, that's a whole conversation. Um, but yeah, this this ended up being a pretty good demo of what the game was all about. Um, Sephiroth feels very fast and powerful which is a very lore appropriate for this time in the game. And yes, I am skipping around because, um, you know, there's not really not, I don't need to go play by play. Um, you get to the reactor, you know, you end up, um, there's a random soldier, just some random guy. I don't know who that guy is. And Tifa. Um, at this point, you actually end up sucking up Mako gas. It's just like a little... It's a little thing. It's not much of a thing. But then you fight the boss. So it follows the general Final Fantasy VII thing. You know, if you played Final Fantasy VII originally, this will seem familiar. But it's just expanded upon. And yes, I am someone that very much enjoyed Final Fantasy VII Remake. And, um... Obviously, I had a couple minor things with it that, you know, I think about in retrospect. I'm like, yeah, it was a little weird. But, um, this does seem like it's going to end up being generally on the same level of quality, if not even a little bit better. Because the, um... Such a puppy. Yeah, Cloud's a puppy. Because the, the open world stuff 
I don't fully know what the open world things are going to be like. It might just be large zones. But compared to Final Fantasy 16, it does seem like there's a lot more going on. You know, in terms of, like, just ex exploration and little side areas and riding your chocobos to get to different areas and finding different hunts to kill monsters. We'll get to that in a second. But yeah, this is Cloud and Sephiroth fighting together. It's like a Chrono Trigger dual tech. Like X-Strike, basically. Um, so yeah, the, the Mount Nebel demo was good. Looked awesome. It played really well. Uh, I was, again, I, I had like a kind of a dumb smile on my face having, you know, played Final Fantasy VII. I was such an obsessive about that game when I was 13. And then to be like kind of randomly invited by Square to play it, it was a little insane, actually. Um, but we then went to... So this is graphics mode. And it's like crisper, but it's 30 FPS. Also, Red 13 riding a chocobo is absolutely incredible and was addressed at the panel um, a couple times. But we'll get to that in a bit. So yeah, I mean, in the... The next section of the demo was Junon, or that's apparently how they say it in game. I've always said Junon, but it's the big cannon town. Um, but yeah, you and the party ride around, and it is a big area. And each part of this area has like, you know, there's there's like crafting materials, there's items, there's um, uh, fast travel points with baby chocobos, which I'm sure you will see. Uh, the visuals are pretty fucking amazing. I have to say, I was actually kind of blown away by it. And it takes full advantage of the PS5. I think it's a better looking game than Final Fantasy XVI, even. You have, um... So this voice you're hearing is actually, like... It's like a computer, I guess? It, or like a Pokédex? And, uh, as you get to, like, rare enemies... I hate to say, it kind of reminds me of The Witcher a little bit, like, because you're fighting these, like, um, these shiny versions of these enemies, and you get different materials from them, you get, uh, rewards, you can see there's actually quests, like, pressure an enemy, stagger an enemy, defeat all enemies within the time limit. The better you do, the more stuff you get. So, it's just stuff that, like, I don't think you even need to do this, but on the way to Junon, Junon, whatever, um, it is something that you can do. Also, these little baby chocobos, you follow them. When I saw it, I was like, what the, what the fuck is this? Why is there a baby chocobo? Is this rare? And what they end up doing is leading you to a little rest stop. And uh, a couple things I will note. Yes, you can pet the baby chocobo. And when you lift the sign up, you unlock a fast travel point, basically. Um, the, I like the little save point graffiti. That's a nice touch. Look at that. Oh man, social media points. Plus 20. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, so this is like under the town. I think, again, it looks absolutely fucking incredible. Uh, you can see these nerds who want to be a part of the reunion. Now, again, I hold the original sacred to some degree, but I'm willing to see the world changed a little bit and expanded. But I feel like this... To me, this did it justice. Like, there was a, a, a lot of doubts in my mind of like, well, what kind of stuff are they going to do? Is it going to be like Final Fantasy 16 and 10, where you just point on a map and go to the location? I'm not 100% sure. I'm still not sure. But this area was big enough that you could probably spend a good hour, hour and a half here. Um... And a lot of it was cordoned off, too. Like, there were things here that were blocked off for the demo, specifically. So just the area near Junon, it seems like there's a lot to do. Um, this town didn't really have a lot to do. There's a shop and a couple other things. I assume there's going to be more in the final game. But again, it's like, this is the type of stuff that was expanded upon. Where in the original, you just kind of walk there on the world map. And then you go under the city, you do the thing, and then you go up top. This, there's things to explore. 
there are people to talk to, there's monsters to fight. Honestly, it, I thought it worked really well. It felt like just the, the right amount of exploration versus getting like to the story of um, the Final Fantasy VII. So all of you know the original storyline plus like expanding on it a little bit. Like there's a couple new characters here. These events play out a little differently. Um, I'm not going to go into it fully, but yeah, I mean, this happened. Um, there's a very silly moment that I kind of don't want to spoil because it's really funny. It's really funny, and uh, I'd rather experience it again live on stream when I stream the game. So yeah, I mean, the fights are really good. Uh, the the gameplay is. I I got listen. The buttons are a little different from Final Fantasy 16, so I was a little bit lost. But once I got back into it and remembered what Final Fantasy VII Remake played like, it was fun. Um, Red 13 is fun to control fast. Uh, has a, a secondary mode like all the other characters do. Um, Barrett is always is the best. Love Barrett. And um, all the new dual techs just add a little extra depth to the gameplay. So I'm, I'm into it. One thing I will note is I wasn't sure how things would like work out in regards to like, okay, so you finish the previous game and you don't carry any of that over. And how do you feel like you've progressed from the first game to the second? My theory is that they just start you with a bunch of magic and skills and then you just earn more as you go. It seems like that was what happened here at the beginning of the game. So yeah. Um, I think it's fine. I don't really... It's been three years, so I don't fully remember. I mean, it, it'll almost be four years between, excuse me, Remake and Rebirth. So I don't really fully remember. Like, everything I had unlocked, every skill, all that. But, yeah. Um, it works. So, yeah, long story short, I played it. I liked it. It plays very similar. There's some definite like smoothness to the gameplay that I enjoy um, might be a, even a little bit better. The exploration is great. The zones are huge. The map showing, I don't think there's a photo of this map, but um, there, there's a map that showed you, you know, like the area and it looked big and it looked like a lot of it was grayed out for the demo. So that's, you know, that's something that I'm curious to see the full game. Um, I didn't see any story developments that were different because I know that there's some aspects of this that are going to be different. Remember, everybody, it's also a pseudo sequel, kind of. I know that's contentious for some, and I know misleading for others, but I will say I appreciate that I have some stuff to look forward to. It may it may not work out, but I liked it enough, aside from some bizarre stuff and remake, that I'm kind of curious to see. The world feels open. It feels like there's a lot of stuff that could be you know expanded upon and faithful and yet there's some stuff including zach i mean you saw zach is alive and well in the uh promo there it makes me wonder what that's going to be like but um yeah overall i was just happy to play the demo it was good and uh yeah so that's that's that um i also at the place i got to take this picture and I got to take a picture with Hamaguchi, the director of the game. So that was cool. <laughs> he, he was really nice. Um, and then there was the, the voice actor panel. And of course, they showed this image, which is Red 13 riding a chocobo. That was discussed several times. Um, I don't have very much video but they did announce live that matt mercer was was the voice of vincent and it's like well he's just in everything now i think the the, the industry needs to have matt mercer in at least five big projects a year otherwise it will crumble that's my theory uh let's see i have a little bit of video not too much really not even that much uh hamaguchi did show up on stage and uh, he talked a little bit about some stuff. Class soldier himself, the voice of Cloud Strife, Cody Christian! This was all live streamed, so 
you know, I'm pretty sure you can watch this whole panel on YouTube at this point. Um, really good, insightful discussion. Um, really, they seem like nice people. The guy who voices Red 13 has such a gruff voice, but he looks like, like he's young. He's not. He's like in his 30s, but he looks really young. I was like, this is Red 13? This guy, uh, John, what's his name again? The voice of Air Wallace, John Eric Bentley. Okay, John Eric Bentley was fucking hilarious and seems like a great dude. And he was the guy on the panel that actually grew up with the game. Like he played it when it first came out and he talked about his experience with it. But um, then they, you know, they discussed Red 13 riding a chocobo. They just thought it would be funny. Someone had the idea and they were like, just do it. And then they focused on the segue. So they spent some time on memes. Uh, but the answer is they also thought it would be funny. They wanted uh, something, some kind of transportation method that would fit for the town, this vacation town. And since you're on a chocobo, like the whole game, they thought something like this might work. And then they eventually thought it was kind of funny and they left it. Um, one of the things they mentioned that I found. So a couple things. Final Fantasy VII sometimes gets um, pigeonholed as like this ultra serious edgy game. And yeah, some of it is, but it's goofy too i mean the original game has a lot of stuff in it that's just you know funny silly it's goofy it's got like mini games that are just absurd i mean there's stuff in the script there's the the stuff in in midgar with the bubbies that's a little bit like again just completely tonally different from the serious story that's happening um they talked about that and when cody the voice actor of cloud was asked like what do you like most about cloud or what what do you like about voicing him he said well he's a goofball and that's true i mean cloud is not just mr edgeman he's also kind of this silly like weird character who says weird things that doesn't realize they're silly sometimes and other times he does and i like that he is kind of a multi-dimensional character and i felt like they did a pretty good job with the uh the first one and considering the material they have for this one, I feel like it could be even maybe expanded a little bit further. But yeah, Hamaguchi was talking about the world of Final Fantasy VII is not all just dark and dour and serious. There's definitely moments of levity. And I think that's one of the reasons it does endure more than some other games of this type. And um, it's one of the reasons I love it. So yeah, them leaning into the Red 13 thing and the uh you know the silliness of of like the segue is all part of that i think so so yeah um i guess i guess that's about it i mean as you can see there's not much here to um to doubt in regards to this team there's the map by the way you know you you can see there's a lot and the amount of time I spent in this one area was about 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes. And it was just that little amount. Now, again, a lot of it's optional. But if that's your kind of thing, then yeah, this, this game is going to be big. You know, I was worried like, okay, they're splitting the games up into three games. How's that going to work? Uh, a 43, 45 hour-ish game going into several and I didn't really know. I mean, the first remake felt like it was too much filler. There's like cat side quests and some other stuff. The way I describe it is I love the game. There's like eight hours of filler. This seems like a lot of that filler, quote unquote, is going to be optional. And it seems like it's going to be more exploration based battles, gold saucer mini games. So I'm very hopeful for this. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. We'll see how the um, the story stuff is handled, but I actually kind of have faith in this team to make it work out. And uh, once again, I was just really happy to be there. I don't really fully know why I was invited. I I'm just honored to to have met Hamaguchi, and 
you know, Square can be a frustrating company. I mean, I'll just say it straight up. Even though I was invited to this thing, I've had my criticisms of Square Enix lately. But when they when they hit and when a game is good, it's really good. So yeah, it was really cool to be invited. I hope the game ends up being as good as I think it will be. And uh, I appreciate you watching this. So yeah, February. It can't get here soon enough for me. And that's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'll see you in late February.